I keep getting a lot of questions, people asking me, how do you develop an apartment complex, Jerome? How do you actually get it out of the ground? What are the steps that I need to to find land, get an apartment complex out of the ground? So today, I'm gonna to explain to you guys the step-by-step -step process of exactly what you need to do to get a multi-family apartment complex out of the ground from conceptually finding the lot all the way out of the ground to being able to develop it. So these are the steps that we take. When we first go in and we're looking for a multi-family pad site, that's a piece of dirt, okay? So let's say, for example, that piece of dirt that we finally find looks something like that, okay? That's just the shape of the land. And so we get a lot of phone calls, we go out, we look at about 30, 40, 50 pieces of land before we find the perfect piece of land. And what makes it the perfect piece of land? What are the steps that we take to know that this piece of land, this oblong piece of land shaped lot is the piece of land to put our apartment complex on? So we do a few different things. One thing is we're always looking for high traffic count. We wanna be on a, on a road that has a lot of traffic and people going through there so that that way for advertising purposes, it will market itself well. Now, I know in spite of the internet right now, people think that, well, we're on the internet, I can market on the internet, we don't need to be, we don't need to have a site that has a lot of vehicular traffic. Don't buy on side roads. One of the biggest things that you want to do is make sure you have vehicular traffic. In spite of the internet, I still believe that lease up, when you go out and you actually build out an apartment complex, is so much easier to market when it has street frontage than it does off a side road. So always make sure you have street frontage, not off a side road, and you look for a lot that has um, enough land to be able to build on. What is that number? Now for us, we don't want to build on anything under 100 units. So when we go out, we're always looking for some, something between three acres and 10 acres. Those, that's a sweet spot for us because we build anywhere between 100 units and 300 units. So with 10 acres, we can build the 300 units. With three acres, we can go out and build at least 100 units most times than not. So that's where number, step number three comes in. When we find a lot and we think we have something that's gonna fit the density, meaning the quantity of doors that we need on that site, we go to the municipality. We go in and we check to see what our, our density can be maxed out at the zoning requirements that we need. So we always do what's called a pre-development meeting, okay? So we do a pre-development meeting. And this one is my informal. We don't put in any formal applications. We don't go in and uh, pay the, the city fees. We just simply have an architect that we retain, typically the architect that actually stamped this. Now, people go, well, how do you find that architect? Well, there's a little sill. It's a little circle on the bottom of that, and it has their credentials in there. It has, it has all their credentials in there, and it's their stamp and sill that they are a certified registered architect and it's stamped. And so a lot of times we'll just either Google it if it doesn't have their address and, and phone number on there already, then we'll just Google the name of that, that survey company and we'll get in contact with them because they've already done the mets and bounds and they've already set the survey for this lot. We'll contact them and we'll ask them if they have a conceptual survey that we can utilize and we'll typically pay them for a nominal fee just to be able to go out and put something very generic together for us. Now, sometimes before we even do that, we'll just go in, we'll take this parcel with a survey and we'll just pencil draw it into it. And we'll say, we'll go in and we'll say, okay, we'll do a building here. We wanna do another building over here. We're gonna do another building over here. This will be a long one. And then we're gonna do another little building Someplace, this will be entryway, this will all be parking. And we'll put in parking over here, and we'll do another building like right over here. Okay? And then we'll have a parking median over here. Parking, parking. This will be the entryway, exit, parking. parking spaces, okay? Now, we're starting to look like an apartment complex. Okay, now that's just like a conceptual drawing of a layout. That's very similar to what I have here. This is a multifamily apartment complex, just something super simple. Nothing extravagant, you don't have to go through all of the, uh, jump through all the hoops for all the entitlements yet. We don't wanna spend money on it right now because we need to see if this is even gonna work. So 
We'll go in, we'll do a pre-development meeting, just informal. We'll put something very generic together, nothing formal, and we'll let them know that. Say, we're exploring to be able to go in and do multifamily on this pad site. Would you guys support us with a multifamily build because it's not zoned correctly, it's zoned for manufacturing, or it's zoned for retail, commercial, or it's zoned for residential, single family, and it doesn't have the density, so you need to change the zoning. So we wanna go in and our whole, our whole intent here is support, for entitlements. Okay, so we want support for our entitlements. The entitlements being the allowance, them allowing us to be able to do this. If we have, if we feel good that they're gonna say, you know what, this is actually a good site. We wanted to, we were considering doing something like that. But we always ask the city to say, what is your long-term goal with, um, for the progressive growth of the city in this, in this in particular area? How can we support what you're doing? And, and then you come in and based on what they tell you, you come in and put something that models what they're telling you and what fits your business model and how you can support their entitlement or progressive growth plan for the city. Next, what we do is once we know that they will support us, we, there's steps that we have to go through as far as talking to the neighborhood, the neighborhood association. The city always wants to make sure that you're doing your due diligence with neighbors because if you don't, the neighbors are in the city hall complaining about what we're proposing and so it, it creates a little bit of lashback on you and the city doesn't want that. The city wants you to mitigate that by communicating with the neighbors around this pad site. And so the way we've, we've done that in the past is we've set up meetings, we've done little websites, we've even, we even have an Instagram page for this development that we'll put together. All of that stuff is free. We just have to go in and we communicate with the Homeowners Association, the president of the Homeowners Association, and that's the second thing that we do, is we, take, we speak to HOA, Homeowners Association, or the neighbors in, in general, okay? Okay, now, before we get so involved and so deep in this, now what we do is we do what's called, we, we underwrite and pencil a soft pencil on this, on this apartment complex. So we pencil numbers. Now, we can't pencil numbers unless we have a few things here. One of the first things we need is we need a pro forma. A pro forma for existing multifamily Worthless. We don't care what it's going to do in the future. When we buy a multifamily pad, uh, when we buy a, a multifamily apartment complex that's already established, well, all we care is about the numbers that day. When we're developing a multifamily apartment complex, we need a pro forma. That pro forma is slightly different because that pro forma tells us exactly what the numbers of other apartment complexes in that area are doing that day. So we can go in and realistically see what our financials and numbers are gonna look like based on other properties in the area and what is, being, what is being rented already that's very similar to what we're proposing. Now there's a need for these products almost everywhere across the continental United States. So when you go in, where do you get the pro forma from? You get them from brokers and you get it from property management companies. Okay, now the property management companies that are already managing assets just like this are the ones that you go in and get it from. All you're looking for is you're looking for the rent rates, what's needed as far as one bedroom units, two bedroom units, or three bedroom units, or even studios based on what is leased up and what the percentage of lease up is. So if you go into an area and it's 97% leased up, 95% leased up is most realistic because you have a 5% revolution every single month on the doors that you're renting in any multifamily apartment complex. That's just a national average of revolution of doors on an apartment complex that's higher level and a little bit larger. So we go in, we get these property management companies and the brokers to confirm what the rent rates are in that area and what realistically we can get for new construction multifamily. Now, if we pencil this and the numbers look promising as far as the returns, now what we have to do is we have to reverse engineer the build and figure out what this is gonna cost us to build. Right now, a product that's simple, affordable housing will cost anywhere between $165 to $185 per square foot to build based on a simple install. Now, this, the spread of this square footage number depends on construction management and amenities, okay? Now, if you're gonna do a fully amenitized 
um, apartment complex with clubhouses, all trimmed out with all the perks, all the whistles. You're going to go in and put the swimming pools. You're going to put in the storage areas, the covered parking, the garages, all of that. You're going to be closer to about $200 to $210 per square foot. Now, we don't build in, this, in that sector too much. We typically stay in this sector. So our, our cost to build is usually right about here, but I've been doing it for 30 years, and I've been in the construction and business space for just shy of 30 years, and I'll tell you that we always manage our stuff to build in this area. Now, if you're new, you've never done it, you should probably underwrite it at 185. Now, based on these numbers, you go in, you see what the lot cost is, you do what, see what the lot cost is. Now you're gonna go in and see what your construction costs are. Then you're gonna go in and you're gonna find out what your offsite improvements are. This is where the variables come into play. So this is your offsite. And this is where now you start spending a little bit of money. So if we go in, and we go in and it's, it passes what we call the sniff test, you know, like the smell test, does it pass? Can I, should I do it? We go, we go in, this meeting goes well. We go in, this meeting goes well. We pencil the numbers based on the pro forma. This goes well, that goes well. The brokers and these guys give us what we need. Everything's looking good. Now we're going in, the construction cost, this looks, the, the lot cost seems to be in check. The construction costs seem to be in check. Now, we're getting a lot of positive check marks. So when we go in, we need to find out what our offsite improvements are. What that means is this site needs water. And not only does it need water, it needs fire sprinklers. So one of the biggest variables is the fire sprinklers and the water pressure that's in this area. So when we go in, we need to figure out if there's a water line large enough to be able to support the density of this of this development right here. If every single tenant in this development flushes their toilet, it's the exact same time, is the pipe diameter in the sewer line big enough to support the, the drainage of all of that discharge into the sewer all at one time? And if it's not, you have to either increase it, the size, the diameter, or you can't build it because you don't want to back up the sewage into this apartment complex. This is where it gets a lot more high level. This is a higher level video to be able to understand how to do bigger deals. Now, if you're looking at this going, Jerome, I just want to build a fourplex. Still listen to what we're, we're talking about here because at some point in time, this is going to become relevant to you and it's always better to know the higher level stuff than just settle for the low end stuff. So always understand the high end stuff of what we're doing. So we'll go in and we'll do, we'll consult with a civil engineer, okay? And they'll tell us where in the road the water and the sewer lie. And based on that, in fact, next week we're going over to Phoenix, we're gonna be meeting with our utility contractor, our underground contractor that does our water and sewer. And we're gonna to talk to him about two different options and see which one's more cost effective so that that way when we go in and we actually have the civil engineer draw, put it on the drawings, the civil engineer puts the option that we pick, which is the more inexpensive option, on the drawings because we've been doing consulting work. Now, this takes a few meetings. This is a larger apartment complex, so this doesn't happen overnight. A lot of times, we do this stuff right here. Once all of this stuff in here, including the construction cost, pencil, then we go in, we tie up the lot. So we'll tie this up while we're going in and we're working on this type of stuff, and we'll do this type of stuff under our due diligence period. Typically, we'll, we'll do a minimum of 60 days due diligence. Most of the time, we'll do 60 day due diligence, 60 day um, close. And so we usually have 120 days before we even actually close on that property. And a lot of times we put in extension parameters saying that if we still need more time to get this stuff done, they agree to an extension so that that way we can do our due diligence. Now we go in and commit by putting deposits down. The deposits go towards the purchase of the land. So we have a commitment level. We're not trying to do this for free or take advantage of anybody. We're doing this based on on what we need to be able to do it. So it's all within good faith. Now, when we go in, we get our, our offsite costs, our civil engineering, water, sewer, that's a big deal. We wanna know what that costs, because that can cost as much as $1,000 per door. You have, two, you have uh, 200 doors, that's $200,000. So ladies and gentlemen, we wanna know what that cost is. Now, another thing that we wanna do is we wanna know what impact fees are, okay?
Now, the impact fees are assessed by the city. These are for road improvements um, that come in the future, curbs, gutters, schools, and stuff that are going to be developed based on the density needs that you've created on your apartment complex. And so sometimes this money just goes to the city, never gets used for anything, but they still charge it, you're still gonna have to pay it. So a lot of times you could just go to the city and they'll, this is public information. This is usually on their website. You can go in, do your due diligence and based on the, on the uh, density and the acreage, you can figure out what your impact fees are gonna be before you do construction. So usually we'll have an administrative assistant in our office go in and assess what our impact fees are and confirm this with the city before we actually go in and do construction. Now, once we compile all of this information, what we do is we're gonna have one last thing and that's our soft costs, okay? So the last thing that we're gonna do is our soft costs. And the way I always explain this to people is soft costs or anything when people have soft hands, right? Architects, engineers, people that sit in an office, they're pushing paper, computer, pencils and pens, and they're doing all of your soft work, your prints, your blueprints, this type of stuff right here, right? You're not getting dirty going out and drawing this type of stuff. Your hard costs are your construction costs. That's when you're out in the dirt. That's all of the hard costs, hard hands, calloused hands of the construction people that are actually building and developing out that product. Now. Ladies and gentlemen, once we got all of these costs, the soft, we got, we know we got the lot cost, we got the construction cost, we got all of your, your, your soft costs for your engineering, we got all of your impact fees, we know what your offsite improvements are gonna be. Now we have all of what the money is gonna take to be able to go out and build this project. Once we go out and we know exactly what it's gonna cost to build this project, now we can go in and we can close on the land if everything check marks out, and we can comfortably say we're gonna make a profit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is every time that we go in and we build a multifamily apartment complex, we exercise these exact steps every single time. 80% of the time, we get to one of these steps and the project drops off. Sometimes it's 90% of the time, but once we go through all these steps and everything check marks, Ladies and gentlemen, it's go time. And so don't be discouraged if you get through 80% of this and then when you get down to your impact fees, it kills the projects. It happens to us time and time again. That's why deal flow is so important. That's why staying in the, active in the market is so important. That's why when you're going out and you're looking at doing this stuff, it's great to put a, a team together to go out and support this process so it happens quicker. And so over the course of time, we've been able to put a team together that in days, we can typically go through and know whether or not this project is gonna pencil. Now, sometimes it even takes months. By the time we talk to the city, by the time we get some of this other stuff together. And yes, sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we spend a few thousand dollars doing assessments on all of this and the project falls through. But when you find that one project, ladies and gentlemen, that one project, all it takes is one. That one project is life-changing. This one project can set you up with passive residual income for the rest of your life. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the process that we use when we're assessing land to go out and build a multifamily apartment complex. If you, like, if you want more content just like this, I'm gonna put some links after this video where you can watch the entire underwriting process of how we actually underwrite the multifamily apartment complex right here on YouTube. Click and subscribe for more content just like this. Pound that thumbs up button and I look forward to seeing you next time.